Hey, everybody. Fascinating chat today as we talk about a company that is leveraging data to understand your business at Modern. Srijan, how are you? Doing well, Evan. Good to see you. Good to see you. Really fascinating mission and vision at Modern. Maybe start with the beginning, your journey uh, to creating the Modern Data Company. Yeah. And uh, what's the big idea? What's the vision? Yeah, so I started this company about five and a half years ago with my co-founder, Animesh Kumar. And in the last three companies we both worked at, I was the head of product, he was the head of engineering, and we were building these large-scale data platforms for the ad tech and the marketing tech verticals. And in that process, I had a good, uh, unique vantage point of looking at how large organizations across the world are working with data, how frustrated they are with the lack of ROI, and the unpredictability of you know the cost and that we saw across the board in europe in the us with all the mobile first large companies that started in the last 15 years in asia most of them were our customers in the last uh, companies and that led us to you know there was a lot of frustration amongst us too is you know how over complicated every enterprise seems to be making their data management stack they're over investing in a lot of tools and they kind of became a tool centric ecosystem versus what it should really be a data centric ecosystem and that frustration led us to thinking about you know there should be a simpler way to solve this you know when the problem is such so repeatable when the outcomes which are a lack of roi are so repeatable there probably is a way to do this better uh, do this in a way that is a lot more customer centric and that's what led to the vision of an operating system for data that converges like your entire data management stack to simplify it. Kind of like, you know, how a Heroku's of the world, you know, abstract out all of the underlying complexity and give you simple ways to work with the, the technology. We did the same thing with data, with the operating system. And second thing we did is in the data world today, everything starts from the left, go to the source system, pipeline, centralize, and then figure out what to do. We felt that is one of the big reasons why there is so much of complexity and a lack of ROI and over-processing of data. So we kind of flip that paradigm to say, let's start right to left. If we can come up with a construct that allows you to clearly capture the business intent and you understand everything you need to understand about your data ecosystem at the metadata level, you can be far more efficient in what is processed, what is stored, you know, what is governed, in what way. And that's sort of what led to us starting this company and the traction that we're seeing so far. Fantastic. And you talk a lot about streamlining operational workflows with technology. Can you maybe maybe walk us through a real world example of how you're you're making impact to customers? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So one of the customers, you know, we work with, it's a it's a distribution company, $30 billion company that is family owned, grew through a lot of acquisitions. And they were like, you know, when I first met that company, I had a meeting with seven SVPs across different business units. And across the board, everyone is like, see, I know what I want to do to embed data in my decisions to be much more efficient, but I'm always struggling with getting the data after spending like 70, $80 million in the prior three to four years. So in that sort of an environment, we went in and said, you know what, let's try to show you an alternate way. So one of the big areas where they were struggling is how do I make all of this data work in my customer domain for my customer marketing, you know, being able to uh, improve the order values, being able to have more personalized experiences on their web properties was very hard for them to do, mainly because of the availability of the data. So within the first six weeks, we create, the first thing we did is took their entire customer domain and mapped it into a customer 360 data product, which is essentially a logical representation of their entire customer domain. Uh, map along with the metrics, the measures, KPIs, whatever you need for that domain. And once we created that data product, that becomes the foundation for them to be able to power all of their business intelligence through Tableau, Power BI, et cetera. The same thing became the heart of their enterprise search, uh, part of the enterprise search. The same data product is powering the recom personalization. And in this process, now the marketing team doesn't have to constantly figure out where is the data lying? Is this data accurate? Who should I go talk to? They have all of that right up front given to them and if a marketing manager wants to embed this into salesforce marketing cloud that is a few clicks if you want to build apps on top that's a few clicks so from that kind of a problem statement they gave us when we started working with them to now 
they are able to build a data app to solve a business outcome within hours on top of this layer. So that's sort of the, uh, you know, that's what gives me the, you know, the joy is, you know, how the complexity of that kind of an ecosystem was completely abstracted and business is able to bring data and the output of their AI and embed them into their decision making, which is, I think, lacking a lot in the broader uh, data space, the last mile of you know, embedding the data in your business decisions. Absolutely. And working with different customers, what are some of the most common blind spots or mistakes that you see your customers making again and again when it comes to adopting digital tools and, you know, and digital transformation in general? Yeah. So one of the things I've seen and talked about it a little bit up front is, do you want to, I, I believe in convergence as a better approach to solving this complexity in data. So during the data, man, like the last, I'd say, decade, decade and a half, with the modern data stack, people are buying a bunch of tools, unifying them and constantly, you know, living in the maintenance cycles versus the value creation cycles, you know. So the majority of the money, mind share, resources go into managing. What I'm seeing with AI is again the same thing. On top of your golden data sets on your data bricks or Snowflake, if you want to now take that data, make it AI ready, make it ready for LLMs to be able to you know, uh, work off of it in the enterprise context, we are again looking at eight to 10 uh, semantic capability, a more you know, uh, flexible and dynamic governance, You know, being able to have a data product lifecycle management. There's a lot more tooling that you need. So again, I believe that again is going to lead to the same problems we saw in the last 10 to 15 years. And you know what Gartner recently started saying, uh, interestingly, is for an AI native stack, you have to think about this converged data management place. And what we did at the data activation layer is also converge eight to 10 capabilities from semantics to the lifecycle management into a single construct, mainly towards simplifying the life of the business uh, that is using this tool and have them focus more on outcomes. So that's sort of the, you know, what I'm seeing right now. And we see a lot of tailwinds with that approach, especially when it comes to AI, because we can layer our technology on top of any data maturity in your data management stack. And in six weeks, we are able to get our large enterprise clients to be AI ready in terms of their data. So that's and that's that, what's really fantastic. resonating, yeah, yeah. No, it's a great mission. And so when it comes to AI integration and gen AI tools, you know, I'm seeing the gamut of interest in the enterprise. Some are you know, excited, early adopters, some are skeptical, some are overwhelmed and really can't get started. But yeah. what's the demand uh, you're seeing and experiencing firsthand? Yeah, so we exclusively focus on the Fortune 1000 sort of a customer. Uh, and we sell into the executives, so the CDOs or the CIOs, the CXOs is who we sell to. So what we are seeing is pretty much every customer we, we speak with is in some shape or form experimenting or has experimented with a lot of the AI and the Gen AI tooling over the last, uh, I'd say, 12 months. Everyone is stuck at that starting line. A lot of experiments, a lot of gains in, in like individual pockets in your enterprise. But now how do you actually level it up to start automating some basic workflows? How do you start embedding that more into your business decisioning? And the scale is where everyone is, or not everyone, but I'd say about 75 to 80% of the customers we speak with, they're stuck at that starting line. The biggest problem is the readiness of the data. Because AI doesn't look at tables, columns, and values. AI needs context. AI needs the business intent, business meaning of your data, which is a lot more to be done to your raw data to make it AI ready. And I think that's where a lot of our customers seem to be stuck. How do I figure out the readiness? How do I figure out security, governance, compliance at scale? And how do I manage the life cycle of all of these things you know, uh, in this new environment? And that's where we come in, is to say, you know, we don't worry about all of that. Run the infrastructure that you run. And the way we position that is think about your existing data management stack as a body that's lacking the brains to be you know, more efficient. And think of the OS on top as the brains that is that has the business context and the business intent, so it can orchestrate all of your tools in a far more efficient manner towards your AI readiness, both from a cost and time to value. So that's sort of you know where we play. Fantastic. Yeah. So you know, there's as you know, there's so many tools on the market. Customers, enterprise, the Fortune 1000 mm -hmm. are drowning in options. 
you know, many are, are sort of locked into uh, one or two big tech roadmaps. I don't know, like a Microsoft shop or a Salesforce shop. I mean, how do you help clients choose the right tech stack? Yes, a great question. So one of the things we do at the OS layer, you're sitting on top of your infra, is we can kind of avoid that uh, ecosystem compute lock-in that you might be seeing with the large platforms that you adopt. Because, you know, we can being the orchestration layer on top of your infrastructure, depending on the workload that you're trying to run, depending on you know um, the need from the business, we can be more efficient in saying, you know these kind of workloads need to run on a Databricks engine, these kind of marketing analytics might be better suited for Snowflake or some ad hoc stuff on DuckDB. So that is something that we are really you know focusing on is giving the customer that flexibility. And the reason is, how nascent this whole market is and when it comes to AI, it's gonna significantly develop over the last two to three years. So we don't want our customers to make that lock-in choice this early, but provide them ways to be able to experiment with you know, tools that they think would be relevant. Like I'm already seeing multiple businesses in a specific uh, customer environment say, we want to use different foundational models for what we're trying to do. So I, our approach always has been give the customer that flexibility to say, bring on whatever tooling you want to, especially when the broader market is so early. And I think it's risky to just say, I'm gonna be a one ecosystem shop. You need that flexibility. And that comes from open data formats, having these kind of uh, capabilities that don't lock you into computes, give you like open APIs, MCP sort of support. So you can start bringing in third party tools and experiment very rapidly. Fantastic. So I assume you serve multiple verticals, and while there are commonalities, there are very unique requirements in each of those healthcare versus a retail discussion I had the other day, manufacturing. I mean, how do you look at the challenges across industries for digital adoption? Yeah. So what's been working for us, a great question, Evan, is uh, because we are such a horizontal play, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, what we do and we can easily bring the vertical models in terms of data products on top. Uh, we are seeing the traction across multiple verticals, but, uh, you know, for us, we are right now focusing on the banking financial services as one of the verticals, industrial and manufacturing and retail CPG as kind of the three key verticals. We are starting to see a lot of inbounds come in from a federal side, which is interesting. And that's something we might get into a lot more next year in terms of the focus on the verticals but where the common point where all of these customers are you know looking at us is how do i get myself to be ai ready i have such a you know fragmented ecosystem so many data silos and the kind of size of customers we work with they often are on multiple clouds in multiple countries with different data localization needs so that is the challenge for them and in that sort of a fragmented ungoverned ecosystem, how do I get myself to be AI ready so that I can start experimenting with conversational interfaces, you know, to actually improve my business. So one of the largest device manufacturers that we recently signed as a customer was looking at a one and a half to two year roadmap to provide a conversational interface for the customer support to be able to search all of your device telemetry to better support you. That kind of a capability we were able to accelerate literally into weeks, six weeks. So that speed, so whenever you have that uh, AI readiness problem is something that where we really shine. In addition to that, when you're really trying to solve some business critical problems and you have failed or you're, you're stuck in the ways that you have done already, in that sort of an environment, when we go in, we more often than not are able to show them this alternative outcome first way, the data OS way of solving that problem. And that also you know significantly resonates with our customers. So, Business critical problems plus AI readiness are the two key drivers of uh, you know, customer interest right now. Wonderful. So let's talk culture, business culture. As the old saying goes, uh, culture eats strategy for business. I mean, how do you yeah. help your customers not just deploy tech, but you know, embed it into the way they're working and uh, their sort of cultural mindset? Yeah. So I'll take a step back before I do that. When I started the company, me and my co-founder, the first thing we spoke about is what are the core values we want in this company? What, what do we want our employees to feel like when they work here? So we came up with humility, empathy, accountability, and transparency as the four key pillars of our culture and values. And we've been very 
strong in ensuring that that culture prevails as we are uh, starting to grow. Testament to that, very little churn, like less than 5% churn for a company that has a lot of engineering in India, which is you know this hottest uh, skill. So that's just one thing that we do. And the same approach we take to the customer as well. We are very empathetic towards the customer. It's always customer first. Internally, we have this metric called time to ROI. How quickly am I delivering ROI to our customers is something that we really look at. And broadly in data, one of the things I see is, hey, I'll, I'll provide the license and then you figure out what to do with an SI or you hire your team. We actually want to solve the problems for the customer. We are not just trying to make a pipeline faster or inference better. Our mission is all of these investments you made have to work at the edge in actually your business decisions. So that's where most of our focus is and whatever it takes for us to ensure that the customer is seeing the ROI is very important for me. And that's sort of been our ethos. In fact, one of the customers that signed up with us, we signed a you know, multi-year license. Their internal teams were not ready to give us access to the environments and the data. It took us about three to four months. I told them, look, don't pay us until you guys are ready. So that's sort of our approach. Right, is why are you paying me when you are not ready? I'm more than happy to wait because I don't want to get paid when I'm not showing value. So that approach has been really, really you know, helpful in, in being customer centric. It flows down not just to this way of engaging or you know the values that we create internally in how we operate as a company, how we are working with customers, our business model too. Unlike any other data company in the market, we never penalize any customer on the number of seats or the data sources or the amount of data you process. We always charge them based on the value created. So number of it's always based on the number of data products you are running in production towards your use cases is what we charge our customers on. And we also give them tools to manage that data product lifecycle so you're not overspending. I strongly believe that, you know, as you start providing, if the customers are happy with the ROI, they'll be, you know, they'll stick with you. And we can, we are seeing the constant expansion happening in most of the accounts we work with. Uh, Wonderful. This approach, yeah. That's a win-win. So you're a trendsetter, but obviously you're also tracking trends in cloud data automation. What are the biggest trends that will define the industry for the next year or two? I think the rise of uh, agents and agent tech workflows, you know, uh, I think is going to be big. I see this as, again, I'm being maybe a little dramatic, but pre-internet to post-internet or pre-mobile to post-mobile, how all enterprises transform themselves. I see we are on the cusp of that kind of a transformation towards running your enterprises far more efficiently than what you're doing. And right now, we are experimenting with maybe you know taking small workflows uh, and, and starting to automate them. But as we kind of mature the agentic uh, capabilities, mature the MCP protocols and the things you need to make these agents work, I think you'll see a lot of uh, significant improvements in efficiencies. You know, internally oh, too, we want the entire data, or I wouldn't say entire, but about 80, 85% of data management to be agentified. There is still mm -hmm. always going to be 15, 20% human in the loop necessary, especially when it comes to data. But that's where I see the market. That's what I'm most excited about is the agentic future. Yes, I would agree. We yeah. could do a whole two hour discussion on that yeah, alone. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. um, what's next for the modern data company over the next few months? Any new services or partnerships, events, innovations on the horizon that you're yeah. excited about? So we are excited about a couple of, um, like I said, a strong interest coming from the federal side. So we are starting to you know, line up some really strong partnerships, which we'll announce probably in Q4 to really start accelerating our, our federal uh, aspect. Currently, we deploy our solution as a PaaS platform as a service in the customer's cloud. And we are actively working towards launching a SaaS version as well, which we hope mm -hmm. will be a Q1 release. It's like a true data cloud, the way we think about our SaaS, like an AWS for data. Fantastic. But, well, lots to uh, look forward to. Thanks so much for joining. Absolutely. And appreciate the, uh, the insights. And everyone, check out tmdc.io, the modern data company, for more. And also check out my new uh, TV show now on Fox Business and Bloomberg at techimpact.tv. Thanks, Rudan. Thanks, everyone. Great. Thanks, Evan. Take Bye. care.